How's it going everybody? Raising Hell here and it's been a little bit over a year now I believe since I last did a video that focused on the client mods that I currently use while playing DST. In last year's video I had I believe 10 mods. This year it's up to 17. I'm going to try to go over them as quickly as possible while giving you the sort of the reasoning behind why I use them. So to get started with here, I'm going to be doing these in alphabetical order. So the first one up is Auto Unequip on 1% by John Watson. Uh, this is a new mod to the list and it is one that I thought I could get along without, but after losing very valuable items like Magiluminescence or let's say my umbrella too many times to distraction. This mod can really save you from a lot of inconvenience for those times when your attention simply lapses and you forget to unequip something that could self-destruct. Okay, the second mod, and this is also a new one for this year, it's called Gorge Victorian HUD. Uh, I recently added this one and what it does is it just gives your user interface a different look. It's a lot brighter based on the Gorge event back from summer of 2018. Uh, the next one here is Action Q Reborn. This is also a new one to this list for this year. I think it's by EZG. You're going to see this name pop up a few more times, so I really at some point need to learn the correct way it's pronounced. But this allows you to automate various things in your world, such as planting pine cones or harvesting resources. It makes it just really easy to do relatively repetitive and sometimes complicated tasks. Uh, for example, planting pine cones requires a bit of attention to detail and some dexterity on your part to do it as efficiently as this mod can do it. So I highly recommend that one. It's probably my favorite addition so far here. Admin Scoreboard by T-Shaw Killer is a mod that I have used in the past. It was in the 2018 video of my favorite client mods, and I'm still keeping it there. Mostly it's useful for when you're playing in multiplayer games when you host the server. If you're not the host of the server, it's not so useful. When you are the host though, you can do things like jump to other players or bring other players to you. Uh, I especially find it useful in counteracting some, like if you have your server open to the public, you know, it helps in preventing problems with griefers and other types of bad actors who might enter into your server. And it kind of gives you an opportunity to either check on what they're doing or to roll back some of their negative actions without needing to do like a full server rollback on everyone. Uh, the next one here is also a new one. It's called Advanced Controls, also by EZG. This one is a little bit more complicated and you actually have to go into the configuration for it to understand why I find it to be useful. So, I mean, one of the biggest things here is the ability to disable the telepoof. Now the telepoof requires a double right click instead of a single right click. This was something that I always ended up doing by mistake and given the fact that in the late game you probably want to use a lazy explorer almost exclusively instead of a simple walking cane, this mod is something that prevents you from accidentally right clicking and making that mistake and using up the durability on your lazy explorer. This mod has some other useful features such as disable attacking walls with force attack or something like uh, neutral shadow creatures when you're wearing the bone helm. These are sort of ancillary to the main reason that I use this mod. Combined status is of course on the list again. This is a pretty obvious one but I do make one small configuration change that most people don't do. For the season clock, I have the setting down to micro. This means that you don't actually see an additional clock in the upper right corner uh, next to your day clock, which would show the season. Instead, it's reduced to a little bar underneath the day clock, which I find to be uh, a little bit less intrusive while providing sort of the same information and functionality. Craft Pot by Ivan X is a new mod to this list for this year. I covered this one in a mod light episode a couple of weeks ago, and it is a mod that I've kept enabled in my day-to-day -day usage of Don't Starve Together. It's most useful for predicting the type of recipe that you're going to make without needing to refer to an outside source, such as the wiki for Don't Starve. Since there are a lot of obscure recipes that I only need to make from time to time, it's nice to at least know that I'm not going to be wasting time by making the incorrect recipe if I don't quite remember all the ingredients that it needs. Fix for too many items is another classic mod that I featured in my client mods video from last year. I don't use it usually to spawn items, I usually use the console for that, but it is useful for like one click actions such as advancing the day, changing the season, resetting temperatures, enabling god mode, and just small things like that. Console commands that generally tend to be a little bit more involved uh, and it's useful just to reduce that more complex command into something that you can 
uh, utilized with the simple click of a button. Geometric placement, I think, is also pretty obvious. This is one that I listed in last year's uh, client mods video, and it is an invaluable tool to help you create a very symmetrical looking base design, especially when it comes to planting resources. Hide Stuff by Koss and Wool is a new mod for this year. As it says in the description, it hides some not so useful interface stuff. The things in particular that I have chosen to hide based on this mod are the blink action from the telepoof wand. This means that your mouse cursor isn't constantly giving you the prompt for a right click to telepoof. Uh, as I mentioned before, the other mod that, that forces you to right click twice to telepoof, since the Lazy Explorer is one of those tools that you tend to use a lot during the late game, it's nice not to have to see that text on the screen that's constantly prompting you right click to telepoof. And this mod allows you to disable that. You can also disable other things like the map borders or the map controls, uh, which I have disabled. They're, they usually show up in the bottom right of the screen. Since I use the keyboard to control to open the map, to rotate the map and stuff, I never use the on-screen map controls and therefore there's just no reason to have that cluttering up my user interface. It can also do things like skip the login, so it'll automatically log in when you load up Don't Starve Together, open daily gifts, and skip the mod warning screen. Uh, idea testing by, you might recognize this name, EZG again. Some of the highlights here involve uh, disabling things like insanity sounds. If you're somebody who is regularly insane, especially if you're streaming or anything like that, uh, you might want to consider this mod because it disables the more annoying aspects of being insane. And insane, being insane is oftentimes required for things like farming nightmare fuel. So it makes sense that you have to be insane from time to time, but you don't necessarily have to subject others to listening to the, like the sounds of insanity or even yourself. Other things like bird trap rustling. If you've if you have a bird trap around your base, you're probably sick of hearing that thing flop around in there. It also can disable the insanity filter, which makes the game a lot less dark. One of the biggest problems with like being insane is that you can hardly see anything half the time, especially when it's night out and, and you're standing on forest turf, right? So it allows you to disable really obnoxious aspects of being insane. And that's what I mostly use this for, but it can also do things like show a lightning rod placer, which is similar to like the radius shown around the ice flingomatic when you're placing it. Improved force attack is a holdover from last year. I've mentioned this one back then. In practice, advanced controls probably obsolete in some form improved force attack, but since the mods like uh, advanced controls are much more general in terms of the problems they address, I still like having the improved force attack mod available because that way I know for sure that it has a very specific purpose and certain aspects of it that I use on a regular basis are not going to be retired as the mod sort of shifts its focus to other things that the developer seems, sees to be more important. As the name sort of implies, it involves changing how force attack works. So for example, you won't uh, target walls when you're force attacking. And the same thing can go for like unfrozen and awake birds when using melee weapons. Nightmare phase indicator by Serg is a new addition for this year. It displays an indicator that shows you the current nightmare phase that the world is currently in, down in the in the ruins, and how much time is left. Well, actually, anytime you're in the caves, this uh, indicator will show up. And it really just comes in handy for helping you avoid getting into bad situations. It kind of performs the same function that the Thulacite Medallion provides without needing to have one in your inventory. It's a bit cheesy, especially if you're on a server that kind of doesn't have other mods, because this is a client mod. It can hook in and display this kind of information without you needing to be an administrator. So the next one here is Observer Camera by GCC. This is a new mod for this year, for 2019. It replaced DST Aerial View, which is what I used in 2018. Uh, I recently covered this mod in a mod light. It just gives you a lot more flexibility than the, uh, the former mod that I used for this kind of functionality. And it allows you to sort of change the field of view of the camera in addition to switching its perspective. You can also focus on different entities and have have the camera track something besides the player. The pickup filters is another recent addition for this year. It lets you disable picking flowers when you're holding down the action key, which forces you to use the mouse instead to pick up flowers. Since I tend to have a lot of bee boxes and oftentimes there will be honey or especially bee stingers on the ground close to the flowers, I'd rather not pick the flowers up or have to work around picking up flowers around those bee boxes while I'm cleaning the area. So it 
the pickup filters. That's what I mostly use it for. It comes in handy for that. It also allows you to disable things like picking up meat, which can be very, very valuable when farming bunny men because uh, if you pick up the meat that the bunny men drop in instead of just the carrots or the bunny puffs, they will mob you, and that is like one of the main reasons people end up getting suddenly killed by the money man. Now, a quick drop, the client version by Fidoop. This is a holdover from last year. I used it back then, I used it now. It's especially useful if you want to do something like stack 20 ropes in a single pile individually. Uh, this can be useful for like the DST version of Fire Farms. Uh, most of the time, though, you just sometimes want to drop only one item from a stack, and this this mod allows you to do that pretty easily. Last one on this list is Show Nicknames by Star. This, again, is a mod that I covered in the previous year, 2018. It just shows the nicknames over other players. If you're playing with uh, people, especially in like public settings where they don't tend to have a lot of different skins, it is just useful like to be able to distinguish between the two the two generic Wilsons running around the camp so you can easily tell who they are without needing to like mouse over them and bring up that additional information. You can enable and disable the name above your own head if you like. So for example, this could be useful for like a little bit of self-promotion if you're somebody who's doing streaming or recording videos because your name is sort of being watermarked there on your screen the whole time and it's difficult. Like if you're somebody who's worried about um, content reusing or something like that, you could do this to sort of watermark your video or your stream so that way others watching it know who the original creator of it was. So that's a couple of useful things you can do here with show nicknames and it's the last mod on the list. So I hope you found that helpful. All of the links to these mods will be located in the description below the video if you're interested in checking any of them out. They are all pretty solid and at this point I use them pretty much on a daily basis or whenever I'm playing DST. So thank you very much for watching as always and I hope to see you next time.